So in this box right here is the most hated Sony camera in 2023, and you probably know exactly what it is, but I actually think it's one of my favorite cameras in 2023, and I actually want to have a chat to my friend, you probably know him, Peter Lindgren. Jason Morris about this camera as well. So we don't let to get through. So let's get it. What's going on, my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing. Now, today we have to talk about this camera right here, and you probably know exactly what's in here. Yeah. It's the Sony ZV-E1. This camera is the most hated Sony camera released in 2023, and that is judging by my poll on YouTube from you guys and also my Instagram followers as well. And I wanna explore the reasons why everyone hates this, or not everyone, but why a lot of people actually hate this camera. But I wanna actually explain the reasons why I really like this camera and why I literally take this camera everywhere. But before we get into it, we have to talk about some of the specs. It has a 12 megapixel full frame sensor, can do 4K, 120 frames per second, 1080p at 240 frames per second. The new AI processor, which gives it great autofocus, gives it that dynamic active stability on top of the regular IBIS, fast rolling shutter performance, high dynamic range, dual ISO of 640, 12,800, and tons more. What's up, dude? Thanks for having me on the channel. I appreciate it. And I uh, can't wait to have you on mine, ma. That's gonna be a blast. Hmm? The main thing that I like with the ZV-E1 is the size. Having a camera that is portable, small, and lightweight is for me something that is very important in the work that I do. I tend to bring my camera a lot of different things and I usually always have it in my camera bag. And previously I was having the A7S III. I freaking love that camera, but when it comes to this one, I'm really glad that it doesn't actually have a viewfinder because it makes it smaller and it fits in my camera bag way better than what the A7S III did. Now also, just to add on to what Peter was saying, form factor. This is the biggest reason why I love this camera because I can literally take it everywhere and I do take it everywhere. This is one camera that literally just slips into the bag pocket and it's just there in case I do need it, in case I do need really nice stability, in case I do need 4K, 120 frames per second, whereas the a7 IV doesn't, or my FX6 is just too large in certain situations. This one really does the job extremely well. It's just such a portable camera that you're just like, well, why don't I take it everywhere? It's so small that it doesn't take up any space. I might as well just bring it anyway, just in case. The next thing is the ease of use. Being able to hand this camera over to my fiance who knows absolutely nothing about cameras and still maintain good image quality and get that shot that I kind of want to have is something that I value a whole lot because being able to have anyone that can help you shoot videos and you just can hand over the camera it's it's like it's one of those things that makes the entire process simpler and not everyone knows everything about the camera some people knows how to get a good angle but they don't know the settings and that is where this camera so like bridges the gap between a phone and a bigger camera now, I think one of the greatest features that I love about the ZV-E1 happens to be that dynamic active stability. And I really wish this was in all of the Sony cameras. It is pretty much like gimbal-like stability that's done in camera. And at this point in time of recording, it's in no other Sony camera. And I can understand that it is a bit of a vlogging feature, but still, I really wish I had the ability to do that. And if you don't know how to do warp stabilizer or you can't do warp stabilizer because it makes the footage completely useless, this does it in camera, but so much better because it does it right there and then. The last thing that I'm going to mention is probably gonna be the sensor and the image quality that comes out of this thing. It's basically the same sensor that you have on higher end cameras, such as the FX6, the FX3, the A7S III, but in a smaller form factor. And being this same 12 megapixel sensor, you can get some incredible looking footage that I'm literally getting out of my FX6. Opens the possibilities to so much more. And obviously the film creator was filmed on the FX3, which is the identical sensor. Also, another great thing that I love about this thing is that new AI chip. Now the AI chip came in the A7R5, which is incredible because it unlocks so much more in your cameras, but it's in the ZV-E1, it's also in the A7C series, so the A7C-R, A7C Mark II, and the Sony Burano. And now this allows for better autofocusing systems, so animal eye autofocus, uh, planes, trains, cars, all those kind of things. When it comes to 
focusing. It's so much more reliable, it's sticky, it's incredible. And it also allows for image stabilizer and auto reframing. So there's a whole bunch of features that this AI chip actually brings in this camera that you don't actually have in other Sony cameras. So there are about six points that a lot of people didn't like about this. And the first one happens to be that small build and obviously that build quality as well. It feels quite plasticky, it's very small. It actually looks like a toy and a lot of people are like, I wouldn't be taken seriously if I was utilizing this for a professional gig. And I mean, I guess there's a little bit of truth to that. You know, some professionals do consider bigger cameras as more professional cameras, but Things have changed and we will talk about that later, uh, but I can understand some of the truths behind that. Now, secondly, it came down to the EVF and uh, well, lack of EVF. There is absolutely no EVF on this. And one of the reasons why is that they wanted to make this as small and compact as possible that you could literally just take it everywhere because it is in the ZV line. So it's a vlogging camera first. So that's why they did take the EVF out. But I know a lot of people love utilizing the EVF, especially when it comes to bright situations when you want to try and look at what you've actually filmed or even just film or photograph, you know, directly through that EVF. With this one, you've only got that flip screen. Now the next two happens to come down to the slots here on the side. Yeah, one SD card slot. And a lot of people are like, well, this camera is not professional because it only has one SD card slot. And I guess there is some truth to that. Previously, SD cards weren't as reliable, but as time goes on, SD cards are becoming much better. Obviously, you want to be buying the reputable cards like ProGrade, uh, Sony Tough cards, Angel Bird cards, those kind of cards that have that reputation of being solid and great performers. You don't want to go on Amazon and get a whole bunch of third party SD cards and then obviously put your whole reputation on the line on these extremely cheap cards. Don't cheap out on SD cards, get the best ones possible. Now, the second one in the side here is that micro HDMI. And that's not great. Nobody likes micro HDMI. I hate micro HDMI. Micro HDMI should not be a thing. I'm going to say micro HDMI again because it's terrible. But they, I guess they had to do that to, you know, make the body a lot smaller because fitting a full size HDMI in the side of this thing would be very difficult. They would have to sacrifice a few other things in here. And it's actually not needed specifically because they are targeting it towards uh, Generation Z, the, the vloggers. And vloggers don't necessarily need full five inch monitors on the top. So that kind of makes a bit of sense. Now the second last one happens to come down to the price. Uh, yeah, $2,200 isn't exactly cheap, but where you actually see it fit within the uh, Sony range, actually fits quite well because it's got the A7S III sensor, all the specs in that plus more for $2,200. I mean, that's pretty good price because a lot of people were saying, well, vloggers don't want to buy a camera that expensive, but you have to think what vloggers actually are or who vloggers actually are, what they actually do. They create some incredible work for TikTok, for Instagram, for YouTube shorts, uh, for YouTube itself. There's so many creators out there that make a lot of money. And we're talking six figures just with cameras like this or less. And that's the thing that we have to think about is that there are a lot of creators out there that are willing to spend this kind of money to get extremely good quality. But some of them may even spend more money on higher quality gear and still call themselves vloggers. Now the last one, I know it's, it's a big one and it's a big saga and I've even made a fair few videos on it and that's overheating. And I mean like sure, you will have a little bit of overheating if you're shooting a lot of long clips with the camera. But the last time that I had this camera overheat with me was when I shot a 45 minutes clip in SNQ mode, that is like 100 FPS in 4K in bright sunlight. So it's like 40 minutes of super slow motion. That is just like, I'm, I'm never really touching that limit otherwise. So I think that for me, the image quality that's coming out of this camera is freaking amazing. And I love the fact that you're able to get the cinematic quality in such a small form factor. But now you do have a solution with the tilter fan. So you do have a tilter cage that you can put on there and the fan attaches to the cage. It's phenomenal. I did a full review on that if you want to go check that one out. But also the new Ulanzi fan that you can pretty much just stick onto the back and it cools the fan down. And they actually do work. They can, you know, cool it down and make it perform 
15 to 20 percent longer than it can actually do and majority of the times this will overheat in a lot of situations where it's extremely uncomfortable to talk in like a situation where you're out in 40 degrees celsius sun if of course it's going to overheat but who in their right mind wants to record in those kind of heats we're all sitting in like a 22 23 degree celsius room which is standard room temperature these things last over an hour if not more in some situations and what does this camera unlock in the future what does the zve1 mark ii look like what's that going to have is it going to be much better similar size let me know in the comments below so thanks peter for jumping on this video i really appreciate it. i've been wanting to work with peter for a long time you guys know that uh and finally we just put something together and uh really thankful for him because he's helped me grow as a creator and he's been a massive inspiration to me and for me to be able to have him on my channel just means so much to me uh, so i do thank you peter and i really hope we can do a few more videos in the future hopefully catch up in person that would be absolutely amazing but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it and maybe change your mind on the ZV-E1. Maybe not. Maybe you still think that this is the worst camera in 2023 or worst camera ever. But think about the possibilities of what this camera has done and where we can go in the future. So I'll leave it to you. Comment below what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one. Let's get it.